The Biden-Harris campaign is in full freakout mode. Politico has some insiders who are revealing the truth. The Trump trials are not working to stop their opponent, and so now they need a plan B. One of their plans is to try to grift off of the Trump trial itself. They're not getting any attention. Everything that they're touching is turning to garbage. And so they sent out a bunch of Democrats to stand outside in Manhattan to say, notice me, pay attention to us, because Trump's being prosecuted over there, and we want some attention attention ourselves. We'll see how it works out for them. But here's the story. Politico is reporting Democrats in full blown freakout mode over Joe Biden. Womp, womp, womp. Why did it take so long is the real question. One advisor to major Democratic donors keeps a running list of the reasons why Biden could lose. Wonder what that list looks like. But here's what's going on. A pervasive sense of fear. Good. Has settled in at the highest levels of the Democratic Party over Biden's re-election prospects. Even among office holders and strategists who had previously expressed confidence about the coming battle with Trump. Oh no. All year, Democrats had been on a joyless and exhausting grind. But now, nearly five months from the election, anxiety has morphed into palpable trepidation. According to more than a dozen party leaders and operatives. <laughs> and the gap between what Democrats will say on TV or in print has only grown as worries have surged about their prospects. You don't want to be the guy who's on record saying we're doomed or anything. Nobody wants to be that guy, but we're doomed. But Biden's stubbornly poor polling and the stakes of the election are creating the freak out. This isn't, you know, oh my God, Mitt Romney might become president. It's, oh my God, the democracy might end. Now, despite everything, Trump is running ahead of Biden in most battleground states. He's raised far more money in April. The landscape may only become worse for Democrats, which means they got to give him the, the old boot, right? With Trump's hush money trial concluding and the case looking much weaker than anybody suspected, even if he does get convicted on this, no one is going to find it to be legitimate. In fact, I think it will probably double the amount of money he's raising and his support. And another one now against Joe is set to begin in Delaware. That's coming up early June. Now, this concern has metastasized in recent days. Jaunted to some, Trump has gone into the headwinds. He's shown up in New Jersey. He's shown up in New York. He's wooing the Hispanic and the black voters. Now, while he's long lagged Joe Biden, he's now raising major donos. One advisor said, the list of why we could win is so small, I don't even need to keep the list on my phone. Like, why we could win. How could that possibly be? Not working out well. On the day after the news broke that Biden trailed Trump in fundraising, Massachusetts governor raised pressure on donors. There's a cluster of fundraising events happening. She's saying, to those who opened up their wallet, we thank you. And their strategy has not work. A Biden campaign advisor granted an anonymity to speak freely, stressed that the president's team never made any indication that Trump's hush money trial would help or to hurt him. Yeah, okay. No, we don't know. Uh, you have no opinion on it. We've not really been paying any attention to it. Trump's on trial? Where? No. Joe Biden was actually mocking him on X about this, saying, we heard you're free on Wednesdays because his prosecutor that left the DOJ to go lead this case brought the charges and Mercon orchestrated the trial right in the middle of the campaign season. So the advisors, oh no, no, no. Instead, the advisor contended that Trump will be forced to defend cutting back abortion rights yeah, and attacking democracy and advancing corporate interests. They say Trump's photo ops and his PR stunts may get under the skin of some very serious DC people. The work we do every day on the ground is to talk about how Biden is fighting for the middle class. His supporters remain optimistic because they're idiots, but they'll eventually wise up as well. There's still a path to win this, they said. In the swing state of Michigan, they're in big trouble and it's not looking good for him. So the point is, they're panicked. They're full-blown freakout mode. Why wouldn't they be? Their president, their candidate can't talk. Are they all just realizing it? They're going to put him up for a debate? Are they nuts? All right, we'll see how that works out for him. But they were so, I think, confused out of options. They don't know really what to do that they went and they got this guy from Hollywood called Robert De Niro to come out and lecture us about Trump for whatever reason. And let's see what they say. Media's ready to go. Biden campaign is now hosting this news conference. Let's listen in. What's happening? Morning, everybody. Good to go. Thank you so much for being here. First of all, let me say this first and foremost. We're not here today because of what's going on over there. We're here today because you all are here. And so we're glad that you're all here this morning. We're here primarily because of the threat that Donald Trump poses to the United States of America and to our democracy. We are, of course, grateful to have two brave officers, Michael Fanon and Harry Dunn, who defended our democracy.
democracy in our capital <laughs> against the violent mob that Trump incited on January 6, yeah, 2021 yeah. here with us. We are happy to have Robert De Niro, a native New Yorker who can spot BS a mile away and isn't afraid to call it out. So the contrast here pretty much writes itself. As we speak, Donald Trump somewhere fighting for himself, maybe taking a power nap. And we've seen him for weeks and for months now. He's in trial, you weirdo. He is in court under subpoena, under court order from a judge, taking a power nap somewhere. He's in the courtroom. That's why you're there. Do you even know where you are? We've seen the ramblings of an unhinged, power-hungry, self-centered man, both here at Mar-a-Lago, on True Social, wherever he may be. But the thing is, this isn't new for Donald Trump. It's how he spent his four years in the White House. It's how he spent every moment screaming at him. since he lost the 2020 election. And in one month, Americans are going to have an opportunity to witness in prime time the clear contrast between Donald Trump, who's a chaos agent, waging a self-obsessed campaign of revenge and retribution, go up against Joe Biden, who's a leader who fights for Americans. Right, so we'll just listen to a little bit of this. Let's put on some of Robert De Niro and let's see what he's got. I mean, this is really, even these people over here are what? kind of, it's kind of crazy. What? It's really crazy. And this thing, Donald Trump has created this. Trump created protesting in America. Trump has brought these people out to come scream at Robert and these two fake cops. He should be telling them not to do this, but he's just, he wants to sow total, he wants to sow total chaos, which he's succeeding in some areas and places to do. Anyway, beside all that. Yeah, get your thoughts together and speak. Like you have a message. Gosh, I'm starting to sound like Robert De Niro over here. Downtown New York City. I grew up here and feel at home in these streets. I feel comfortable. The Twin Towers fell just over here just over there this part of the city was like a ghost town and now donald trump is going to take down new towers and american democracy like the statute of liberty but we vowed we would not allow terrorists to change our way of life and we started the tribeca festival to bring people back i love this city i don't want to destroy it donald trump wants to destroy not only the city but the country and eventually he could destroy the world but we vowed we would not allow terrorists i owe this city a lot and that's why it's so weird that donald trump is just across the street because he doesn't belong in my city i don't know where he belongs but he certainly doesn't belong here we new yorkers used to tolerate him when he was just another grubby real estate hustler masquerading as a big shot <laughs> A two-bit playboy lying his way oh, into the tabloids, these guys are pretending just the worst. to be a spokesman, a spokesperson for himself. What's your argument? He was calling it as himself for himself to fool the press into inflating his net worth. What is your argument? A clown. Got it. But this city is pretty accommodating. We make room for clowns. We have them all over the city. People who do crazy things in the street, we tolerate it. It's part of the city, it's part of the culture. All right, let's see if he takes some questions and then we'll just call it a day because we can only tolerate so many of these people. Danger he is to our lives. Oh, the horn's off. This is not a threat. This is a reality. And that's why I've joined the Biden-Harris campaign, because the only way to preserve <laughs> oh, our yeah. freedoms and hold on to our humanity is to vote for Joe Biden for president. Really, we don't have a choice. Should have rehearsed your lines there, Robert. On January 6th, while Republican lawmakers despicably tried to keep the loser Trump in the White House. He's lost it. And Trump-inspired insurrectionists stormed the Capitol. <laughs> brave men and women from law enforcement put their lives on the line to defend this country, our democracy. Lunatic. They are the true heroes. These guys are the true heroes. No. They stood and put their lives on the line. No, they didn't. For these low lives. For Trump. No, they didn't. They lied under oath. Commenter. They, they lied under oath. They lied under oath. Who lied under oath? They what did. What are you telling me? Those two traitors lied. Excuse me? Those, Those two, two cops, so-called. They lied under oath? Yes. Yeah. What are you saying? They're traitors. Yes. I don't even know how to deal with you, my friend. I don't even know how to deal with you. Say something. They stood there. They didn't have to. And there were other ones in there who probably were in with them a little bit too. And they found a way to get around. Not these guys. What? They stood there and fought for us, for you, for you. Well, they they weren't fighting for me. No, no, they fought for you, buddy. Yes, You're they able did. to stand right here now. Yes, they did. They are the true heroes. I'm honored to be with these two heroes today from former Capitol Police Officer Harry Dunn and former Metropolitan Police Officer Michael Fanon. All right, so actor number two is going to come out. Come on. I came here today to remind Americans of what Donald Trump is capable of. <laughs> And the violence that he unleashed on all Americans oh, on January 6, man. 2021. Oh, it's just great. <laughs> well, someone turned that decades, 
I was a DC police officer serving the <laughs> citizens of the District of Columbia, primarily working in narcotics. On January 6th, 2021. Yeah, All right, that's that guy. It's just hysterical. These people are so just broken. I'm here to remind America about the violence that Donald Trump has unleashed. All right, so here, let's listen to Harry Dunn. This guy, of course, lost his election. He's not going to be in Congress anytime soon, despite Democrats saying that he deserves to be there for whatever reason, because he ran around like scared little child on J6. All right, let's hear it. We wouldn't be here right now. I'd still be at work, working at the United States Capitol. I appreciate the words by Mr. De Niro, Officer Fanon, but anytime I get an opportunity to acknowledge, address, and thank the men and women of the Capitol Police and the Metropolitan Police Department who served that day to protect our democracy, to protect each other, to make sure everybody got to go home that night. That's what we fought for that day. The fight for a lot of us didn't end on January 6th, that evening when we went home. The fight still continues now. What happened that day was an attempt to overthrow an election. There you go. Okay. You've been practicing this for like three years now, my man. You still can't figure that out? All right. So tough on that one. They brought out Jason Miller. He came out, talked to the media after the fact. So we got some response and rebuttal from the Trump side. Here is what he had to say. Thank you, everybody. Jason Miller with the Trump campaign here with Caroline Levitt and Stephen Chung. So the Biden folks have finally done it. After months of saying the politics had nothing to do with this trial, they showed up and made a campaign event out of a lower Manhattan trial day for President Trump. In fact, Biden's cronies had a printed out campaign sign saying Biden Harris. So dumb. So why the change? Why is Joe Biden now making this a campaign event panicked. after months of weaponizing the legal system against President Trump because Joe Biden's numbers are in the tank. The headline for today in Politico very simply said Dems in freak out hey, over Joe Biden. That. Joe Biden is losing nationally, is losing in every single battleground state, and President Trump's numbers continue to rise. And the best that Biden can do is roll out a washed up actor, and don't worry, Marks will be shorter than the Irishman. I won't make you suffer for three hours, but the best they can do is roll out a washed up actor. Last week, President Trump spoke in the Bronx, right over 25,000 people show up to rally around him. The Biden campaign could do was put out a web video with Robert De Niro. There is nothing behind the Biden campaign. Their numbers are in the toilet. Kamala Harris is a terrible alternative and it's all an attempt to try to turn around the Biden campaign. Now what's happening here in Manhattan? We're in closing arguments for the Biden trial. We've been here for six weeks. Nobody has said that President Trump did anything wrong. We have a highly conflicted judge with an unconstitutional gag order and everybody sees this case for what it is. In fact, the New York post this morning nice with the headline for jonathan turley is trump trial comes to close da's flimsy case is nothing to brag about everybody knows this case is complete garbage president trump did nothing wrong this is all politics if you don't think this is politics then why do the democrats wheel out a retread like robert de niro to try to change the subject you could see the look on the biden campaign staffers faces they knew this was a bad idea it was bad they didn't want to <laughs> be here did they do it but somebody at central command told them that everything is going down the tubes for Joe Biden. And I hand it over now to Caroline Levin. Somebody said, just get out there, make some noise. You have to go where the energy is. Trump's making too much noise and momentum. He's gaining momentum from this trial. So they have to go and fight it head on. And they look like fools doing that. They brought out Robert De Niro and he couldn't even answer questions. What you just heard from is a desperate and failing and pathetic campaign who knows that they are losing. Joe Biden's sending his campaign outside of this criminal courthouse. It is a full-blown concession that this trial is a witch hunt that comes from the top, comes from Joe Biden, and he is using a far left district attorney in this city, Alvin Bragg. This case would have been laughed out of any other courtroom in America. Legal scholars on both sides of the aisle, even liberal legal scholars agree, there is no crime, there is no case, but Joe Biden knew he could use Alvin Bragg, who is sitting in that courthouse today, wasting away the tax dollars of the hardworking people of this city to go after Joe Biden's political opposition. And the man overseeing this case is a corrupt and highly partisan and crooked judge who is highly conflicted for reasons that President Trump can't even talk about because this judge imposed an unconstitutional gag order gag, on the former talk president about of the United States and the, the leading frontrunner in this election. Can. This Not is a daughter. disgrace. President Trump has been locked up in that courtroom for six weeks, but guess what? The American people see through this witch hunt in this scam, and that's why President Trump continues to rise in the polls. That's why he pulls a crowd of more than 25,000 in the deep blue Bronx. That's why he pulls a crowd of more than 100,000 in deep blue New Jersey. Everywhere he goes, everyday Americans, not elitist, out of touch Hollywood actors like Robert De Niro, who have no idea the real problems that people in this city and across this country are facing. President Trump is backed by the hardworking men and women of this country. And I could not help but laugh when Joe Biden's spokesperson actually 
Kelly came out here and said, accused President Trump of being the threat to democracy. Joe Biden is the real threat to democracy. He is weaponizing our justice system. Look at all of you. This is a communist show trial. There are real problems in America and you are all out here covering this because Joe Biden is weak, he's pathetic, he's a threat to democracy, not only with this weaponization of our justice system, but with his wide open border invasion that is allowing a mass invasion of illegal people into this country. Terrorists, criminals, our economy is in shambles. We are heading towards World War III. Those are the issues real Americans care about. That is why President Trump is going to win this election and ultimately he will be vindicated of this sham crooked trial because he has the truth on his side and he is an innocent man. Let's go. All right, so good commentary and response from the Trump campaign in response to the Biden campaign showing up. Absolutely freaked out. You can tell that they're nervous because they're just taking action. You've seen people who do that. Something goes wrong and suddenly they just start flailing around, scrambling, trying to come up with a solution. So they thought it was a good idea to bring out Robert De Niro to try to make the case as to why Trump is some sort of threat to democracy while their own candidate is breaking 234 years of American precedent and historical norms to prosecute his political opponents. That's the real threat. And now I think people are starting to realize it. So we're going to continue to cover this. We've got more great content coming up. So watch this video next and we'll see you over there.